In this video, we're gonna be going over 10 more common questions for OBS. Hey folks, AJ the CEO here. If this is your first time stopping by the channel, thanks for stopping by and on this channel. We focus on tips, training, strategies, reviews, and bills to help modernize your media ministry. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. So consider this a part two to our top 10 common OBS questions. So let's go ahead and just jump straight into question number one. How can I hear what is going out on my stream? This is really easy. Let's go ahead and cut over to the computer. And as you can see, I'm here. I am picking up from my webcam. That's where you see the activity going on. Now, this doesn't matter what source that you use. What you want to do is come over here, click on the gear, go to advanced audio properties. And right now it's set to monitor off, meaning that you're not monitoring it. It's just going over the stream. If you want to hear what it is, get prepared for your ears real quick you can change it to monitor and output. <laughs> All right, so again, that happened because of the <laughs> mic is so close to my speakers here. So that's how you can hear what is going on, whether that be a video file that has music to it, intro that has music, just regular music in the background, your camera input, your capture device, that's how you could do that. Question number two. How do I remove the echo from my audio? So if we cut back over to the computer, so as you can see right now, we're capturing our um, webcam audio directly from the webcam. Now, if we were in settings, and most likely um, you have this set, you have desktop audio, or specifically you have mic, and let's say I have my mic set to the exact same thing. The echo is being caused when you have two channels bringing in the exact same audio, causing an echo, which is in my case right here where OBS is capturing audio from my webcam, but I also have my webcam set to capture audio from it. So I'm capturing twice for no reason. So what you wanna do is whether, and um, this could happen the same way if you're capturing a window of a video playing, but you're also capturing the desktop audio because the video or music that you're playing is naturally coming out your speakers, which would be desktop audio. But if you're capturing that audio again, now that's twice. That's the same type of situation. Real easy is either you just have to mute one of these, or for example, if I'm capturing audio for the entire program, using my mic auxiliary, kind of like what I'm doing right now with my, with my computer, I'm capturing everything from my soundboard that's going over USB to OBS, and I have mine set here. There's no reason for you to capture audio inside of your webcam. So either you can just turn it off by not linking the audio device to this, which will turn that off, or if there's a reason why you have it on, already set back you just need to mute one of them and then that will get rid of the audio so now as you can see audio is only coming in in one track the exact same thing works if you were playing a video or audio file number three how do I pause or rewind video in OBS now in OBS natively there is no way for you to do that when you like if we cut back over here to the computer if I go to my intro starting soon this video just plays and then right now I have it set to loop just for this example, but you can't rewind it. So how do you get around that? If you are in a situation where you really need to play a video, I would not play the video natively inside of OBS. What I would do is go to your video player of choice and let's just say I'm over here using VLC. So I'm playing some drone footage and let me go ahead and loop that this drone footage here that I flew the other day on a very, very beautiful afternoon. And what I would do is come in here, let's do a window capture, and I would select this, and I already made this. And as you can see, now I'm capturing this. Now what I would do is resize this so that it takes up the full screen and gets rid of my controls. But then on my other screen, I am gonna have controls to pause 
and do all that functionality that I need. So as of right now, there is no native way to do this inside of OBS, but this is what I'm using and I think this will actually work better for you right now until they add some functionality to do that in OBS. Number four, how do I increase my stream delay in OBS? So this is really simple. Inherently, you're always gonna have a delay because it takes time for the video to go up from your computer, from your, um, to your, over the internet, to your streaming platform, then back down. It's always gonna have some form of delay. It's never gonna be one-to-one. -one. But if you want to increase that delay for whatever reason, what we can do, let's go ahead and cut back over here. And under settings, we're gonna go to advanced. And then here is stream delay. You just check off enabled and then change the amount of time that you want to delay. Um, now you can play around with this, but for all the time that you delay, it needs memory in your computer to do that. Not a lot, but be mindful of that. Now, I don't know of the upper threshold of how much you can delay it. Um, I think it's almost, I don't want to say it's unlimited, but um, I think the highest you can go, yeah, it's 999. 999 seconds that's the highest you can go but you know you can play around with that and all you have to do is enable it and then once you start streaming it will be had that delay behind when everything goes out number five how do i increase the video quality of obs so let's go ahead and cut back over here again and a couple of things your video quality is going to be determined obviously by your camera what resolution and frame rate is coming into the system not necessarily frame rate, but the resolution is coming into your system through your capture card, what your capture device can handle. Then you're gonna go into your video quality, the bit rate of that, and then the output. So if you want to change that, first we're gonna come into settings and then we're gonna go to output. So right now I have mine at 4,000 kilobits per second. That means my internet is able to sustain that upload speed. So you can change this number to whatever you want, but it doesn't matter if your internet upload speed can't handle it. So this is where the tools and the auto configuration wizard works because it will look at your system as well as your internet speed and give you a good recommendation of how, how high of a configuration you can actually support. But after you do that, you change this, that will give you better quality in how your image looks. Question number six, which ties into that same question, is how can I change my output from 720p to 1080p or whatever res resolution that you want? So if we come back over here, that setting is under video. Here, your base canvas is what you're seeing on your screen. Your output is what is actually gonna be delivered to your platform of choice. So under here, this is where you can change to 720, P, that's the last number 1280 by 720 or 1920 by 1080 so those are the two HD resolutions and you have a bunch of other resolutions here and that's how you can change that very simple next question is how do I remove the buffering on my stream now it's two types of buffering here and I want to make sure we have a difference of understanding of terminology Buffering is when you're watching a video and your internet speed, your download can't keep up. So the video pauses and you see a little circle or something like that, or it actually may say buffering, meaning that it's trying to fill up the buffer of your video so that normally when you're watching a video, your internet connection is fast enough and you're watching and it's downloading the next part that you're getting ready to see. Buffering happens when you it's not fast enough to keep up and you watching your video has caught up to where it needs to download so you have to wait for it to download and buffer so that you can actually watch it now there's two types of buffering the buffering on the viewer side is not something that you can control just like i just said that is dependent on their internet connection so if anybody in your church is saying hey the video keeps buffering what you need to do first is, well, what I suggest you do first is ask somebody else, are they experiencing the issue? Because if somebody up to two other people are not experiencing that, that is that viewer's internet connection, which you cannot control. 
Um, now, buffering and lag are completely two different things. Lag is what you experience on your side when your system can't keep up with the settings that you have and you're trying to stream at a 10,000 kilobits per second upload speed, but your upload speed is only two kilobytes per second. Um, yeah, two, that's really bad if you have it that way, but um, just two, and then your system can't keep up, so it's lagging behind because it can't keep up with the demand of what the system is expecting to happen. Um, so those are two different things. If it's on the viewer side, you can't control that. That could be the user's internet, or it could be the platform you're on. Facebook had that problem when we first went into this and everybody was hitting it and their servers weren't ready for having that many people live streaming at the same time. So that lag was by the provider because they were lagging behind delivering the content to the viewers, or it could be lag is behind you trying to upload it and your specs or your internet can't keep up with what you your software is saying that it's expecting so buffering and lag two different things buffering is normally on the viewer side which you are not in control of and it's not buffering on your side it's lag on your side number eight how do i do the multi-view in obs and that's really easy as well too Let's cut, go ahead and cut over to the computer. Now the multi-view inside of OBS is not the same as like multi-view like in a switcher like the ATEM. What the multi-view is gonna actually show you are all of these scenes that you have established and not necessarily the, in, um, the inputs from cameras. Like right now, I have four cameras connected to my ATEM Mini, but you are not gonna see this when I do the multi-view because it can't do that, it can't control that. It's only gonna see whatever active channel that I have open right now, which is my desktop. But to open a multi-view is really simple. You can either just go to view and pick full screen or windowed. I'm gonna do windowed right now, it makes it easy. And as you can see, it is showing all of my scenes. This one is what's active right now. This is what I'm gonna go to. It's doing it that way because I'm not running in studio mode. Um, I have my starting soon, my streaming, another streaming. And as you can see, it's not going to show, um, well, actually, let's go in here and play with this. See, I don't have an active camera in here. So let me go ahead and add my webcam here. All right. So I have this one. So if I go back to my multi view, now, as you can see, all of my sources even if I'm using the same video input on different channels are showing up. Again, these are just scenes. So I can click on here to go between my scenes if I want to. You can right click on here and say you wanna push stuff full screen, just let you control it in any way. And that's really simple how you can use the multi-view. Number nine, and I'm actually gonna do number nine and 10 back to back. Number nine is how do I record my stream and then number 10 is how do I automatically stop my stream or my recording? So if we cut back over here to the computer, recording is really simple. Right under the stream button, you have start recording right there. Now the settings for that are in output where you can point to where you want this to go to, like mine is pointing to the wrong one. So now it's gonna record to my E drive and you have your video quality you can do same as stream, which will copy these settings. High quality, um, indistinguishable, or lossless. Lossless is the highest one, it's just uncompressed. You gotta make sure you, your system can handle that. Me personally, I use indistinguishable. That's what I do when I record these videos. And just to let you know, when I record my videos, I'm actually using OBS to record it. Um, so this is the exact same way I have mine set up right now. Now you can change it to whatever format you want. Me personally, I use FLV just because if anything happens, if this crashes, I still have the video. Um, MP4 and MOV, if it stops abruptly, you know, you've pretty much lost the video. Um, MKV, I think is the same, and the other ones I haven't really messed with. So honestly, I just leave mine in FLV. Now, just like you have an encoder for your streaming, you can have an encoder for your recording and you have the same options. Now, if you're using, like mine, I have a RTX 2060 graphics card. 
which is fast enough to do streaming and recording at the same time. So I would pick the same thing, but you need to play with these settings, um, especially if you're gonna be streaming and recording at the same time. And that's pretty much it. And it's all set, apply, okay. I do recording, boom, your stuff is being recorded. Now, the second part, of, no, number 10, is how do I automatically stop my stream from recording? Now, under tools, if you go to output timer, we have our stop streaming counters as well as our stop recording. Now, this is a good thing to put in place if you have the tendency of forgetting to stop your stream. You can set this to a broad number, and I did this at my church to where there's no time we're gonna be streaming for three hours. So I would come in here and set this timer to three hours um, and set this to zero. And I can check this off to enable streaming timer every time. So once I start streaming, it will stop automatically after three hours because it's assuming that you are not going to be streaming that long. If you're streaming games or something like that, um, like your PlayStation, Xbox, you wouldn't want to do this because it would just shut it off. And that will start automatically if you have this checked off or you can do it as a one time thing and just hit start and then it will go. And obviously it's not working right now because I don't have this link to a platform to start streaming. Because if I hit start, it will start your streaming at the same time. Recording works the same way to where if you just happen to leave recording on, I did this my mistake one time. I actually was recording choir rehearsal and forgot to turn it off and it recorded for two days until the next choir rehearsal. So you gotta make sure you got enough space on your computer to handle that as well. This would save me. So you can set your time. So if you know you're not gonna be recording for a certain amount of time, you can engage this and just like before, you, you can enable um, a recording timer so that it will stop after a certain given time so that you're not just running your recording for too long. So all right, so that was 10 additional common questions I get a lot from OBS. So I hope that helped. If you have any other questions or there are other things that I didn't go over, you can leave them in the comments or you can email them to questions at ajhomes.com and we get enough, we might have a part three to this. So anyway, if you like this type of content, I appreciate a like, consider subscribing and hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry. This is AJ, we will see you on the next video later.